Hello and welcome to COVID-19 updates live on the Nigeria Customs Broadcasting Network, NCBN. Reaching you live from our studio here in Asokoro, the Federal Capital Territory, Abucha. My name is Duin Dia. Well, COVID-19 updates live is designed to bring to you topical issues around the ravaging COVID-19 pandemic in Nigeria and around the world with a view to educating you, our viewing populace, and also helping you to maintain those attitudes or perhaps habits that will help you stay safe for your sake and for the sake of your loved ones. Well, it is a morning period for the country, Nigeria, owing to the development surrounding the deaths of the 21st Chief of the Army Staff, talking about uh, of course, Lieutenant General Atairo and all the other officers of the Nigerian Armed Forces who were on board the if fitted aircraft that crashed in Kaduna last Friday. We want to wish their families the fortitude to bear the irreparable loss. Just we are also using this medium also to console and comfort all. Nigerians and all compatriots, as well as those in the front line. It is indeed a sad moment for us as a country. Of course, the president has already declared that the flag should be flown at half mass to honor the fallen heroes. Well, Nigeria is our country, and we have no other country. We will continue to do everything that will unite this country. So, let's take this short break. When we come back, we have stories already lined up for you surrounding the ravaging COVID-19 pandemic in Nigeria and around the world. Don't go nowhere. Good morning, sir. Kindly have a seat and put on your face mask. Okay. Oh, wow. What be me and you day here? I'll be the virus day here again. All of the two months, Jari. Face mask. Oh, guys, say me you put on your face mask properly now. Now, malaria when I they feel like this. Ah! How oh, about now? This protocol, protocol. Do you need water? Yeah, sure. Thank you, madam. Okay. <coughs> I beg, wear your face mask, I beg. I beg, wear your face mask, I beg. Seriously, guys, COVID 19 is real and you should adhere to all safety protocol. It is not a chin guard. It is not an eyeglass. It is not an earring or a wristband. It is not even an ID card. If you are taking it off, take it off completely from the elastic cord and do not touch the exposed area of the marks. Wash your hands, sanitize your hands, be responsible. Avoid stories that touch you. Welcome back. It's still COVID 19 updates live on the Nigeria Customs Broadcasting Network, NCBN, reaching you live from our studio here in Asokoro, the Federal Capital Territory, Abucha. Now, let's move on to the latest updates released by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control. A total of 40 new infections have been released, given a breakdown of 29 from Lagos State, 3 from Abia, 3 also from Ogun State, 2 from Kano. Kaduna State recorded one new infection, Plateau 1. Rivers recorded also one. Bringing the total confirmed cases of COVID-19 infection in Nigeria since the first in this case to 166,019, with 156,476 persons already treated and discharged from the various isolation centers 
across the country. Sadly, the death toll resulting from COVID-19 infection is put at 2,067. 2,067 of our compatriots have lost their lives to the cold ants of deaths as a result of the COVID-19 infection. We want to wish their families the very best and the fortitude also to forge ahead and bear the irreparable loss just as we are wishing the souls of the departed eternal rest. Now let's move on to vaccine administration. A total of 1,929,237 jabs of the Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccines have been administered to persons across the country, given a proportion of 95.9%. As you can see on your screen, the breakdown released by the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency, of course, in partnership with the Nigeria Center for Disease Control. Now, let's move to the global scene. A total of 563,692 new cases of COVID-19 infections have been released by the World Health Organization bringing the confirmed cases of COVID-19 infection to 166,346,635. Sadly, the death toll resulting from COVID-19 is put at 3,449,117 deaths across the globe. On vaccine administration, a total of 1,440,000 Eight million two hundred and forty-two thousand eight hundred and ninety-nine jabs of the COVID-19 vaccines have been administered to persons across the globe. On regional breakdown, America tops the table with sixty-five million nine hundred and seventy-nine thousand four hundred and sixty-nine cases of COVID-19 infection, followed by Europe which has also recorded 54,108,090 cases of COVID-19 infection. Southeast Asia, 30,088,649. Eastern Mediterranean, 9,862,629. Africa, of course, Africa is Nigeria's continent, has recorded 3,446,000 and 89 confirmed cases of COVID-19 infection. Western Pacific, 2,860,945. Those are the figures as you can see on your screen. Well, you can give us your, send us your comments, your feedbacks, or perhaps your question via our, our email, COVID-19 update at ncbn.ng, COVID-19 update at ncbn.ng. You can send us your comments, your feedbacks, or questions around COVID-19 infection. In fact, one of our plans uh, before now was to bring up an expert who, who was going to talk to us about managing other deadly diseases during COVID-19 pandemic, and in fact, we are looking at cancer as a case study, of course, but due to some exigencies, the guests cannot make it, but we assure you that we're, we're going to sustain that conversation and try and bring the experts to educate us because, of course, we are talking about COVID-19 infection because of the spread and the havoc it's wrecking on both countries around the world and economies. Of course, a lot of lives have been lost as a result of COVID-19 infection. So we cannot stop talking about COVID-19 infection to educate people and to make people see reason to actually adhere strictly with all of the COVID-19 guidelines and protocols given by the Center for Disease Control countries and of course the World Health Organization. Now, let's move on to other stories now. Uh, there is 
this headline that says 90 travelers from India, Brazil, Turkey wanted. And the story says the Presidential Steering Committee on COVID-19 has mounted a human hunt for 90 travelers, both Nigerians and foreigners, whom it described as danger to Nigeria's public health. In a statement by the chairman of the PSC and secretary to the government of the Federation, Mr. Boss Mustafa, the committee said the 90 persons who are currently at large across the country have violated the guidelines issued for travelers entering Nigeria from India, Turkey, and Brazil. The federal government, after identifying the danger posed to global health by new variants of COVID-19, which were predominantly found in the three countries, had introduced a travel advisory mandating travelers from uh, any of the countries or who had visited any of them 14 days prior to arrival in Nigeria to undergo a compulsory arrival quarantine and testing protocols. However, according to to the statement, the said 90 offenders whose names and passport details were also made available in the schedule released by the PSC uh, last night sneaked into the country without respecting the advisory, the advice. They have been accused of endangering Nigerians' public health regulations, which attracts spell out punishment. The PLC shall, in addition, take further steps to sanction these violators. This step include disabling their travel passports for a period not less than one year, cancellation of visas permits of foreigners that have abused our hospitality and prosecution under the 2021 Health protection regulations. Additional list of batch two defaulters shall be published in subsequent announcement by the PSA. Well, that is really uh, a sad one and I think is not good enough on the part of those violators. But again, again, let's turn our, our lens to the other way around. Like, before these people come into the country, one would have expected that there should be proper checks at the entry point because um, from all indication, these violators, these offenders came in through the airport. So before anybody departs from any country, they're supposed to have been signals that at a certain airline coming from social destination will be landing. And such information, for me, this is my personal view anyway, uh, that such information was supposed to have been circulated and those in charge are supposed to have taken the necessary measures to ensure that as that flight was touching ground in Nigeria, the proper procedure was supposed to have been done instead of now waiting and allowing them to enter, to integrate into the society before now issuing this warning. Well, I think this is just some of the things that the federal government of Nigeria, through the various agencies that are in charge of this responsibility, need to take into cognizance and, of course, step up their games. We should not be reactive. It's better to be proactive. Of course, We've had uh, similar cases in the past, and I, I expect that such normally should have given us a kind of idea of how to handle such cases, uh, not allowing them come into the country, go to their various destinations, and at the end of the day, they are now declared wanted. Measures is supposed to have been taken to ensure that people coming from not just this uh, uh, countries that have been ravaged with coronavirus, the third wave, and new strain of COVID-19 infection. But even in other countries, I, I'm aware that for every flight that touches ground in Nigeria, in our airport, there will have been a signal 
prior to their arrival, that Soso flight is coming from Soso destination so that they can liaise with the, with the control room. And s the control room normally should have given the government or perhaps those um, that needs to know the necessary information. Now, let's leave it at that. We know the government will do all within its power to track those people. And we want to advise, if perhaps any of them is watching this program at this point, well, it's just good to be law-abiding citizen, report to any of the nearby health care centers or any nearest police station and just report yourself. Uh, it's actually for your good. You never can tell if you're a carrier at least so as not to endanger the lives of people who you're going to interact with. Because as we speak now, there are a lot of recreational centers, there are a lot of hospitality centers that uh, perhaps uh, are not really taking the measures too seriously and too stringent. So uh, it's just important for us to take some of these things into consideration. Now, moving on, CDC studying reports of heart inflammation in young COVID vaccine recipients. The story says some teenagers and young adults who received COVID-19 vaccine have experienced heart inflammation. A U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention advisory group said, recommending further study of the rare condition. The U.S. Center for Disease Control Advisory Committee on Humanization Practices said it had looked into reports that a few young vaccine recipients, predominantly male adolescents and young adults, developed, of course, inflammation of uh, that's inflammation of the heart muscles. The condition often goes away without complications and it can be caused by a variety of viruses, the CDC group said. Center for Disease Control Monitoring System had not found more cases than will be expected in the population. But members of the Committee on Vaccines felt that healthcare providers should be made aware of the reports of the potential adverse effect, the committee said in its statement. It did not say how many people had been affected and recommended further investigation. Well, we know, like we've said on this program, we've had experts coming to tell us about how human body react to food and drugs. So uh, there's possibility that Mr. A can take a certain drug or vaccine and not react negatively and Mr. B take the same vaccine or drug and react negatively. It's all boils down to how individual body system reacts to certain things. Of course, I've said it on this program before that we have people ordinarily who don't eat food that are very high in acid, like, for instance, beans, um, for instance, taking oranges. Of course, there are people who naturally, they don't take beans. Uh, there are also people who don't take orange. So it's also similar to drugs. According to the uh, information gotten from experts, that people's body system can react differently to food, to drugs, uh, and vaccine. So uh, I think it's nothing to worry about, basically. Uh, of course, it's good that such reaction is coming up so as to help those uh, in charge of such vaccine to know to further uh, look at other area of their research and look at the efficacy of the vaccine so that if certain rules or certain guidelines should needed to be added to what has already been provided then such information can be released so as not to endanger the lives of people that will be taking such vaccine. But for now, I think there's no need to worry. In Nigeria, we've been using the Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine. And of course, uh, it's the, the vaccine arrived sometimes ending of, um, of February, and now we're in May. So at least we're already three to four months into the administration of the Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine. 
and we've not seen any adverse, major adverse effects here. Of course, there are people who complain of sore on the point where they receive the injection. We've had people who feel that nausea feeling. We've had people who had that drowsiness and all of that. Of course, I even met someone who received the vaccine and told me that after getting home, he started having, he started having swollen legs. Um, which, of course, became, he started panicking. But he went back to the hospital. Then the doctor asked him a certain question, asked him to run some tests. And at the end of the day, they gave him some drugs and then discovered that it was a different ailment altogether that just got triggered as a result of vaccine. And it's fine as we speak. So. And again, we are also using this medium to tell you, our viewers, that perhaps if you have any of such experience or you know someone who received the Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine, the one given by government, because we've again said it on the program that, of course, like we've seen that at a point, people started proliferating the vaccines and we started seeing a lot of fake vaccines out there. Now, the federal government already said that COVID-19 vaccine is only administered by government institution, especially the National Primary Health Care Development Agency. You see their agents moving, of course, with the normal carrier bag they carry. You must check the ID card and confirm that they are truly representative and of the federal government before you take any vaccine. Please don't go to any local outlet or go or on social media to start looking for how you can. It's very easy. Go to any of the healthcare centers, any teaching hospital, or any primary healthcare center and get, vaccinate, get vaccinated. So there's nothing to worry about. Now let's move on to other story. Moderna, Novax. Uh, to produce more COVID-19 vaccine in South Korea. And the story says Moderna Incorporated and Novax Incorporated entered into a deal with the South Korean government to manufacture their COVID-19 vaccines as the country has seen under pressure to secure more and faster deliveries of U.S.-made vaccines. Saturday's agreement with the U.S. drug makers came a day after U.S. President Joe Biden said that he and South Korean President Moon um, Jin had, uh, had agreed on a comprehensive partnership on COVID-19 vaccines and that the United States would provide vaccinations for 550,000 South Korean soldiers. Moon under pressure over the COVID-19 pandemic said a vaccine partnership would combine U.S. expertise and Korean production capacity. Moderna, whose shot was granted approval in South Korea on Friday, said on Saturday its vaccine will be manufactured by Samsung Biologic Co. and that it intends to supply this vaccine to markets outside the United States starting in the third quarter. South Korea had emerged as a global vaccine production base with its fourth COVID-19 vaccine contract manufacturing deal. Vice Health Minister Kang Do told a briefing on Sunday. Well, uh, especially now that um, India is going through um, a surge in the, in the case of COVID-19 in that country. So as a result, most of the production of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine now have been used by India itself because the country already said since it's facing a very huge rise in the number of cases of COVID-19 in that country that it won't be wise for that country to export the COVID-19 vaccine, it has to ensure that the citizen gets vaccinated. So these are now put burden on other producers of COVID-19 um, vaccine. And well, this is a good one, seeing that the United States of America and South Korea is already entering into partnership to produce the vaccine. Well, we are hoping that when this project 
spring up, of course, it's going to avail third world countries like Nigeria opportunity to assess more of the COVID-19 vaccine. Remember that the federal government of Nigeria is already putting resources together and making frantic effort to ensure that we get another tranche of the COVID-19 vaccine, even though it might not be the Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 like we started with. But of course, we have other uh, vaccines that are uh, efficacious that can be administered to persons. But before I go, let me again remind you that when you take COVID-19, a certain COVID-19 vaccine, like we're using the Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine, of course, when you are taking the second dose of the vaccine, it has to be the same vaccine you take. If you decide to take the Pfizer vaccine as your first shot, it means your second shot also will also be the Pfizer so that it can be efficacious, so that it can actually achieve the purpose. Of course, we've not seen results or perhaps the outcome of people mixing the two vaccines together. For instance, you take a certain vaccine, let's say XY vaccine, and you take Z vaccine and you combine it. We've not seen such reaction, but uh, it's just better that we listen to medical advice and just adhere to all of the recommendations given. Well, this is where we should draw the cutting on the program. My name is Doni Dia, as you can see on your screen, COVID-19 updates at ncbn.ng. Send us your comments, send us your questions, and we will attend to them. I'll see you some other time. Bye-bye for now.